really appreciated everybody being here. We've got one more segment to go. I see Dr. Eric Pulver's here already, and we're gonna, um, you know, his uh, business partner Dimitri is gonna be joining. But our last segment's gonna be Denti AI. It's a really good uh, plat artificial intelligence platform. We've talked about a couple today. I'm really excited with what they're doing. Um, you know, Dimitri Tizoff is a founder and CEO. He's got a lot of um, years working in artificial intelligence in the telecom industry. He's going to be here. He's going to talk about it. Dr. Eric Pulver is here. He's a chief dental officer also for Denti AI. He's trained in oral surgery, assistant professor at Northwestern, director of oral surgery at University of Chicago Hospitals, real um, illustrious background um, as a dentist. He's involved in this project, really excited to talk about it because I think, you know, it, it, it allows clinicians to still have the final say, but I think it makes them better clinicians and more accurate using the artificial intelligence. So, you know, Dr. Pulver, I've got you here. I know Dimitri's joining us, but let's jump right in and get started. I know Dimitri will be here soon. Uh, thanks for coming. Welcome to Innovations in Dentistry. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Can you hear me all right? I can. So just talking about this, one thing as a regulatory attorney, I've been a dental regulatory attorney for 25 years. We got to get right out here. This is not replacing the dentist. The dentist has the final say over what happens here. You know, the Terminator supercomputer is not practicing dentistry, but this is making the dentist a lot more effective at doing their job. That, that's the idea, right? Absolutely, Brian. Thank you for that uh, kind introduction as well. And the sessions have been great. Um, to this point. Um, yeah, this is a massively transformative technology, and it's used to enhance and support and assist uh, dental providers. So you're absolutely right. It's not to replace, it's to help. And in a time where we have so much information coming at us so quickly, uh, none of us can really be perfect. And we often think that we are. Uh, I know many of us uh, who are practicing go home at the end of the day and go through our cases and hope we didn't miss anything. And, you know, we want to do this to help our patients. And I think this is a real nice way to assure that we're able to do that. And as we progress further along, it will even become more helpful um, and go from being an assistant to a monitor, to a coach, to a teammate. So we really have to look at it in that way. Well, let's start with this, okay? I've, I've learned that Dimitri's here. Welcome, Dimitri, glad you're here. Hello. Uh, uh, you know, I've learned a lot in the last year about artificial intelligence. I have to be honest, I didn't know a whole lot before, say, a year ago, and I've learned a real lot about it. And um, I was a little skeptical when I first heard about it a year ago, and now I'm seeing all this mind-blowing information, and I'm really becoming a big fan of it. But let me let me ask you this question. What have we learned about, you know, your technology involves radiographs. You know, there's other artificial intelligence that involves, you know, listening to phone calls and making suggestions and training staff. Yours involves review of, you know, x-rays, radiographs. Before we get into exactly, you know, the technology and everything, tell me what you've learned. I'll start with, uh, with uh, Eric, Dr. Pulver. What have you learned about the accuracy of AI reviewing radiographs versus even highly skilled dentists looking at radiographs? Well, it's, it's interesting that uh, one of the things that we've been able to capitalize on is the work that was done uh, prior in computer vision. And uh, it was the furthest along. And we've been able to work with that and then transfer it into the academic situation. And uh, one of the things that impressed me uh, right off the bat was how accurately it seemed to find early areas of decay. So in some instances, up to 20 to 30 percent of incipient to moderate decay isn't identified. And using computer vision, which is better than uh, human vision, we can pick up those fine changes that the human eye isn't able to see. So one of the things that we began right off the bat was partnering with some of the leading academic institutions in North America, uh, in Louisville with Bill Scarf and uh, at UNC with Don Tyndall, who are the past and immediate past presidents of the American Association of Maxifacial Radiology. And we worked with their teams to actually get academic validation of our algorithms, which was essential because 
it's not just a good idea. We really wanted it to work, and we wanted our ground truthers, the people that really said this is what the rest of the learning will come from, to be the top clinicians uh, in, in the world, if we could. So we use that, and we have some studies that we've posted uh, in your data room uh, that show a poster that we actually won an award at Louisville, and we were invited to uh, present at this year's Joint International and American Association of Maxillofacial Radiology meeting, or uh, sorry, the AADR meeting, a dental research meeting, which didn't happen like so many of the others that you've been talking about already today. Um, so some of these, you know, things were very important to us to get the academic validation and the accuracy. And we find, though, that the clinicians and the providers working with the AI are better than either alone. So it really shows a real important partnership that we can have with AI. And I think that dentistry is in a perfect spot to take that lead because we're technologically, uh, technologically advanced with our 3D printers, with our intraoral scanners, and the technology that we're using, pad cam and so forth. And we're also kind of curious as, as a profession. And we've always been that way. So I think it's an interesting combination. Yeah, I mean, the point that that I wanted to make and that I've learned, you know, because somebody will always say, look, I've been a dentist 25, 30 years. I don't need some computer telling me what to do. I mean, I was even a little bit like that when I first heard. I'm not a dentist, of course, but when I first heard some of these things, these artificial intelligence applications. But the reality that I've learned, at least with radiographs, is the computer doesn't wear glasses. The computer doesn't get fatigued. The computer doesn't get tired. The computer doesn't have, you know, a graph graduation to go to or a family event where, look, they got to get somewhere. So they just glanced at it real quick and ran out the door. You know, they don't have all those things. And the, the computer can do, you know, arguably, unless there's some malfunction, the same review a million times in a row without getting fatigued, tired, or, you know, distracted by something else going on. You know, if, uh, you've got, they're building a new office across the street. And you're trying to look at the radiograph and they got a jackhammer and it's, you know, making a loud noise and it's distracting you. Theoretically, the AI will review all of these over and over again without any of those external factors factors affecting its performance. Isn't that correct, uh, Dimitri? Yeah, absolutely. This is the case. Uh, and we see it uh, well, uh, with experiments. Uh, so, uh, yeah, besides those two results we shared, uh, we have a new one uh, to be published soon that shows actually uh, how the dentists perform together with AI compared to uh, without AI. And we see that there is a statistically significant increase in their accuracy. But also what we see is that the uh, variation among the dentists or even among the images processed by the same dentist is uh, much lower. So basically everybody is getting to a certain level. Uh, and uh, I think this is very important uh, and uh, answers your point. And what are we looking at? I mean, we're definitely looking at caries and decay, but what else are we looking at, uh, you know, Eric, when we're looking at, um, you know, when the AI is looking at the radiograph, are there other conditions besides, you know, caries that they're looking at? Yes, there's a tremendous number of other features that we can identify, uh, as well as one of the things that we're well known for at Denti AI is our automated charting. And we're able to identify off of a panoramic image and number the teeth with bite wings, the panorex, and take PAs. And we've been able to seamlessly integrate where the diagnosis is coming from and populate into a practice ma management software system. We actually have a video uh, that's been shortened. We have the full length one that's available to viewers as well. Um, and yeah, in the we have a 37 second clip. If you want to show that, that's certainly appropriate now. And then I've got some more questions for you guys also. Yeah, that, that, mm -hmm. that would be great. And uh, this, uh, just as a to segue into it, this starts halfway in where we're already loaded up the images and we selected the patient and it's gathered them and it starts to scroll over and identify findings and then populate it into an EMR. So if you, if you could play okay. that, Chris, that would yep. be great. We can do that. 
The patient's images will be automatically analyzed by our award-winning, academically validated algorithms for pre-existing treatments and probable disease detection. Scrolling through the imaging, you can easily accept, adjust, and reject the suggested findings from the latest patient visit. When your review is complete, Denti.ai will aggregate the findings from all the latest radiographic images into a single patient chart. With one click and a confirmation, we'll magically auto-populate the patient chart for complete practice records that keep your organization in compliance. So as you see there, um, that was just a quick uh, view of some of the magic that we have in the system um, that takes much longer to go through. But what, one of the points is that we can find crowns, we can find normal anatomy, and we can find pathology. So we can go from uh, marking on an odonogram, an endodontic procedure, a crown, a restoration. We can define the type of re re restoration, the location of the restoration. Uh, we can m mark missing teeth. We can also find more information on the edentulous sites. We can look at pathological findings, periapical radiolucencies, and the list goes on, you can imagine. Um, yeah, so I mean, the way this works, just at a basic level, is patient comes to your office, you take a radiograph the same way you would do any other time, you take, uh, you take the radiograph, but instead of it just being visually reviewed by the dentist, you will run it through the proprietary AI program, and they can come back with, with some findings, and this is what we've been talking about, that the AI is proven in, in conjunction with the dentist to be much more accurate and more effective, if I'm understanding. Yes, it's, uh, it, it's instantaneous, and it pops up on the screen. I don't know how they do it. Dimitri and Max right. and, and the, uh, are brilliant at what they do. Dimitri it's and like Dimitri science can... being indistinguishable from magic is the old saying, and that's, that's what they're doing, it sounds like. Well, yeah, and uh, I oh, want to so it it, 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 That was going to be my next question. Does it just mm -hmm. take a second? So you take the radiograph and to have it reviewed with anything of note flagged, is, is that instantaneous or how long does that take? Well, a few seconds at most. So, uh, and, uh, well, actually, uh, we also do processing of large batches of images, like thousands and tens of thousands of images, and it just takes hours, and that's it. The whole history can be processed and analyzed. So an interesting uh, perspective, we worked with a large uh, DSO, we work with a number of them, and we were able to upload uh, thousands of charts and analyze them and look at them for quality assurance, missed findings. And we were finding uh, numbers in, in, in uh, upwards in the range of 17% of uh, findings that would be acted upon to move forward uh, for care that would be provided to patients. It also helps with acceptance of care because it's sort of unbiased and you're learning this and seeing this together with, with the provider and the patient. Uh, it provides, you know, it's a cloud-based system and it provides calibration and standardization to the interpretation of the radiographs. So we have these parameters as dentists to follow, but they're often challenging between providers to agree on what we're looking at. We have 70% agreement between providers. So it really helps to streamline that and bring bring that to the forefront and help with our communication, which is nice. No, that, that, that sounds terrific. So how long does it take to get, you know, enrolled in this? If, if a practice is interested in signing up for this, how long does it take to, you know, get set up on the AI system? Mm -hmm. Well, for the pre-integrated solutions like we have with Dentrix, we have uh, with Open Dental, and some others, it, it takes just a couple of weeks. And we support uh, the major uh, imaging vendors, such as Texas, CareStream, and uh, others. So it, it doesn't take too long. Uh, mostly, it's about setup and training. Training is just one hour. And is this some type of uh, monthly subscription fee, yearly fee? How is this priced out? Yeah, Eric. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a SaaS model, so it's a monthly fee. 
And uh, we have an enterprise fee for, for DSOs or emerging DSOs, multi-office locations uh, versus what we may have for individual offices. And we can really track the ROI as well because we find uh, differences while it's b being used versus prior to. Uh, so it really kind of makes sense in, in, that se in, that, in that model and it's been accepted well. And Brian, one other thing that I wanted to touch on is that we have a real nice model for bone loss as well, which is significant because uh, with the new AAP classifications, we want to track progression and sometimes small changes are challenging. We can compare images as well. Uh, and that can really help link in you know, oral systemic health links and overall making dentistry have a bigger impact on healthcare and oral health, the oral biome, the gut biome, and so forth. And that's a, a big place that we're pushing towards. And we see computer vision and, and AI as a, a doorway into that bigger picture. And what, you know, where do you see this going um, into the future? You know, we've talked about, you know, carries and some other things. <laughs> you know, if people sign on with this now, you know, where do you think that, where do you see this technology being in two, three, four, or five years in terms of what it can do? Well, I, I, Dimitri probably has a better idea of how we're going to get there, but I, I, it keeps me up at night. I'm excited by the opportunities because I, I think that we can link so many different data points into what we're putting onto the cloud and how we're assessing it, that we can incorporate, which we're beginning to do, uh, 3D imaging, STL files, intraoral cameras, health records, linking dental management systems to medical management systems, and maybe uh, looking at a new way of payers to reimburse uh, providers for long-term outcomes and maybe enhancing the way that patients pay premiums because they're taking more of a role on what where they're going to. Maybe we link up uh, different biomarkers in the mouth that we're using when we're brushing our teeth in the morning and different ways with our, our, our toothbrushes and our toothpaste and our rinses and and our oral health and glucose levels and wearables in the mouth. It, it's really a, a, an opportunity that is only limited by our curiosity and our imagination, two uh, things of which I think uh, there's no shortage of in the dental world. So I think we, can, we could be the leaders. Dentistry could be the leaders moving forward with AI integration into healthcare. And, and I'm hoping we can get there. That's, that's the plan, right, Dimitri? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't think anybody, any patient will uh, actually uh, trust a dentist in three to five years' time if the dentist doesn't uh, use this technology because it, it's kind of everywhere in your phone. Uh, so everybody expects this. You know, well, guys, let me ask you. So, it, it, go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. I was just saying that point about trust is that you know, dentists have always been at the higher level of what we trust as a profession. And there's a social contract that we have that's sort of unspoken that we're bound to, you know, uh, the highest levels of, of being ethical and, and moral and learning and providing care. But all those things are changing in the new digitalized revolution that we're, we're seeing. And I think that although any profession can have the, that, that trust, by incorporating new technology and doing it in an ethical and in a helpful way, we can build on that future together and keep that trust, you know, and carry the torch forward. This has been great. No, this is just terrific. So, so final word here, if anybody listening really you know, is interested, wants to learn more, explore signing up, sign up, how do they do that? They, well, they can go to your site that we have, and we have a bunch of information yep. on that. They, they can email uh, myself, EP, at Denti AI, uh, and we can co connect them. They can go to our website, www.dentiai, as well, and they can sign up as a beta tester, and we have our support team that could reach out. Um, we you know, have been really busy with our developers, but we're always open to talking to new emerging DSOs and others in the market. And before I go, I wanted to just yeah. put one last slide on for one moment. Sure, of course. It's really important uh, for the DSOs out there. We're able to uh, use our analytic dashboard and uh, kind of pull up data across an entire network of providers. 
And we're able to then compare diagnostic findings on the radiographs to uh, help providers uh, say one provider's missing wisdom teeth or there's edentulous areas between three and 30 that could be implant sites. And um, we can guide and target our education and onboarding uh, to providers that may need help. We can also in some cases work for overdiagnosis. We can look for calibration and standardizations and the metrics are kind of a holy grail of dental intel because we can now work with some of the great metrics and companies that are already doing this on the business numbers and we can now have a ground truth. And it took a while to get to this point and it is fully customizable and it could be something that, that a lot of the emerging and established DSOs would be interested in learning more about as well. Terrific, terrific. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dimitri. Thank you, Eric, for being here. It's my pleasure to have you guys. Thanks for being a part of this event and hopefully we'll see you in person soon. Yeah, thank you very much, Brian. Your whole team's been great. We really appreciate the opportunity. All right, take thank care, guys. I hope to see you soon. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, that's the end of our program. It's been a pleasure to be here uh, with everybody. Thanks for joining the first Innovations in Dentistry. And I hope to see you, uh, if not in person, virtually soon. Take care, everyone.